folks, this is Joe Falcione with ReliantFilms.net. Uh, one of the things I wanted to go over, uh, I'm looking for a way to basically create this type of effect in Bryce uh, 7, 7 1 Pro. If you're not familiar with Bryce, Bryce is a uh, 3D landscape application. It is free from DAS 3D. Um, it is basically the go-to application for 3D landscapes. You can see some of the pictures here. It is a free download. I don't know how long that's going to be. They've changed their business model a little bit so that you basically download premium content and that's what you pay for so they give the application away for free but things that are in the application you can model yourself you can download a lot of free stuff there's a lot of models and stuff out there that's available that works with Bryce uh, for creating landscapes I mean there's just it's pretty cool so uh, I just wanted to point that out you can get it from DAS3D.com and if you're, if you're not familiar with Bryce go ahead and familiarize yourself with it because it is a very in-depth in program and we're going to basically create a crevasse and the, I've seen a lot of tutorials out there that do something similar but nothing really speaks to the ease in which you can do this so that's what the point of this is I found this actually in an obscure manual that I had to search for on the internet uh, and then figured out because the tutorial wasn't very wasn't very clear and it wasn't working for me exactly so uh, I'm gonna give you the basic one-on-one -on -one quick overview and we're gonna create something similar to this with a crevasse alright so let's get started so again if you're not familiar with the interface familiarize yourself with the interface I'll try to stay away from um, this is not a this is a beginners tutorial but it's not totally beginner so you should understand what some of these things are if not um, go ahead and do a search for those you want to create a new document I just use max recommended just by clicking that it automatically sets all the defaults click OK and as you see the render window here the nano window <coughs> or the nano preview it's rendered out basically a, a blank scene. That's it. So what we're going to do is we want to get go to edit, click on the ground plane, highlights in red, go to the arrow to the right of the edit bar. Let's click on terrains, planes. Uh, let's do let's do cracked mud. Say OK. And as you can see, the nano preview automatically updates, and there is cracked mud. Um, I was working on something earlier, so this is actually set to a too high of a resolution. This will take forever to render. So in this drop down here, you can go to quality and just hit default, and then you'll see the render is much better. Unfortunately, this is only a 32-bit application. It is not a 64-bit application, so it's going to take some time. Anyway, so here you go. Here's the ground plane done. Let's go ahead and create a terrain. As you can see, it just automatically creates. You've got different options here for scaling. I'm going to grab the Y. I'm going to make this a deep um, terrain and I'll, I'll, I'll show you why in a bit. And then here's the scale. You can just grab this guy and scale it up, 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 up. And there you go. Let's go ahead and adjust it by going to edit and let's position this a little bit more to about right there. And there you have it. Now, here goes to here. Let's just create the crevasse. Here is your first terrain. You want to go to attributes. You want to click on negative. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see it turns into a dotted line. That means it's a negative value. That means anything it affects, it'll affect anything with a positive value. So let's go to the ground plane here. Go to attributes. Make this a positive. So now you've got a positive and a negative. Uh, one of the things that Bryce does that defaults to a, um, you know, static. I think it's a random pattern. So this is like probably some kind of green, uh, mountainous type thing. And again, this is low low quality, so uh, it's not going to look like it's supposed to. Um, <clears throat> go back to edit materials on the mountain. Let's change that to cracked mud as well, so that it matches. And for some reason, uh, Camtasia is interfering with the interface just a little bit so if you see some see me double clicking on things uh, that's not that's not necessary it shouldn't be for you anyway so with this <coughs> with this uh, selected go ahead and hold the shift key down and select your ground plane now with both of these selected go ahead and group those two together and now you'll see in the render window in the nano preview it's now disappeared 
And the reason for that is, is because the terrain is a negative unit. So in order to move just the grouped, just the terrain in the grouped object, you need to only select it. So if you see the tab, you'll get the camera, and then you'll get the ground plane and the terrain. Come down here to your uh, terrain selection, or your selection menu at the bottom. If it's not there, it's going to be, you simply click on your wireframe to bring up that interface. Just click it once because it's the only object. It'll select it by default. If you have more, more terrains, you push and hold it, and it'll give you the option to select many. Now that that's done, just come here to your X rotation, hold down the shift key, and we're going to rotate this 180 degrees. And there you go. So now here's where the magic happens. Just grab your Y position, and let's reposition it by bringing it down. And let's make a nice, big, deep crevasse. And as you can see in the render window, it has cut into the ground plane. Pretty cool. So let's change the camera just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, you can do that by selecting these types of clicks uh, or these types of changes. I don't normally like to use the rotation because it's so delicate. It is ridiculous. So there you have a top view of your crevasse. So pretty cool. You got your sun, you got your lighting elements, and let's just go back to default. And of course, that isn't working. Let's pull that out a little bit. Oh, look at that. Pretty cool. So <clears throat> let's just go ahead and uh, bring that up just a little bit and bring that to the side. Like, actually, just position everything to the left, just somewhat like what we had before. And let's see if we can bring the sun up just a little bit, get more shadows on these uh, tops here. Okay, pretty cool. Alright, so let's just finish the scene out. Uh, and the only reason I'm going to finish the scene out is because I don't like to leave anything unfinished. Let's go ahead and scale this guy up. We just click, clicked on New Terrain. Let's go ahead and scale this bad boy up. And then I'm going to go ahead and move him way back. Well, not way back, just on the side like, just like we had before. And let me scale this guy out just a little bit. And bring him back in. I'm not sure what material it assigned to that, but uh, when you see the edges here, you know, I'm, you know, that tells me that he's just a little bit above the ground plane. We want to bring him just slightly below so that has a basically a gradient or a gradual build uh, into the peak. And because it's different material, it's going to look different. So let's change that to rocky cracked mud. And again, Camtasia is messing with my interface, so when I click OK, it doesn't disappear correctly. Alright, pretty cool. So you can do one of two things. You can create another one of these, or duplicate it. I'm just going to create another one. I'm going to scale him up, and bring him up this way, and I'm going to maximize his size, her size, whatever. All right, and let's go ahead and bring him way back into the distance. I tend to use, uh, there's different ways to position. You can position this way by grabbing the object itself, the terrain itself. I like to use the uh, position blocks here um, because I can control it just a little bit better. And you have to go <clears throat> opposites, so Z and X to push it and push it and push it. So let's go and scale this guy again. This is a scale block. And let's bring him up to something crazy. Yeah, I'm not real happy with that. Alright, that's more like it. Huge, 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 huge. Let's get him off into the distance. And let's spread it out just a little bit so it doesn't have such a funky looking peak. 
Let's just render that out. That's pretty cool. Let's give us a nice mountain off in the distance. Got some haze going. And again, this is just, I, I'm literally just goofing off at this point. Let's change the material to cracked mud. Give it a little more. There it goes again. Camtasia just kind of screwing with my scene. And then let's add a water plane <coughs> and wrap up the little tutorial. So click on water. As you can see, it's going to cover everything. It's not what we want. So in order to do that, now if you want to stop rendering, just click anywhere on the screen. We want to bring this down. Grab your Y axis and your position. Bring it down until it just disappears. Just disappears. And there you have it. Pretty cool, man. So, now, <clears throat> I'm not real happy with the sky, so you can go to sky and fog. You can make adjustments here. You got your sky mode. You got your shadow intensity. Sky mode, I'm not sure what we can change other than just the colors. I think it does a random shift, which of course, we don't want that. Not unless you're gonna use a blue screen of some kind and then you can add your backdrop. Shadow intensity, I like to bring this all the way up. Uh, you've got your fog height. Fog height, uh, can, can you just bring that up and down? Fog height's pretty cool. Um, for certain things, but we really don't need this. And then, of course, you can change the colors by clicking here and pulling up your color picker. Let's use like a green fog. Of course, we don't want fog. You got your haze. Haze intensity, I think, defaults to eight. I like to set it no more than one or two uh, because anything other than that, it takes away the contrast of the picture. And that's really the only haze you need to show distance anyway. And then you've got your cloud height and your cloud coverage. But I'm going to change the sky. So I'm going to go to sky and fog. I'm going to click on this right arrow. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose something like, I think what I chose last time was either lazy afternoon or grays and pinks. Uh, jet stream. Let's try jet stream. That looks pretty cool. Ooh. Interesting. So like I said, um, it's a great tool to just goof, or just goof off and create stuff. I mean, it really is awesome. Uh, let's do cloud coverage. Let's bring that down a little bit because it's just a little too much. Pretty cool. And of course, we want to go ahead and change the cumulus here a little bit much. So go to Skylab. Here is your render. If it's not rendering, it'll give you a block or a bowl, a ball or a meta ball. Click render in scene. And let's change the diffuse amount just a little bit. Uh, wrong way. Shadow intensity. And then cloud cover. Stratus cumulus. Let's turn cumulus off and just take a look what that see. Alright, so that's pretty much what we want. We want to just lessen that just a little bit and bring the height up. Sorry, down just a little bit. I think that'll do it. For a very basic scene, sorry man, that's pretty cool. And we'll go ahead and render this out so you get a pretty good idea what it looks like. I'm not real happy with the sun yet, so let me change that just a little bit. I want to get a feel for, there you go, that's what I'm looking for. I want more of the shadows on the sides of the mountain with the sun coming basically from the east. And there you got it, man. So let's go ahead and render this out in full render. You can get an idea for what this is. And again, you can always add some cool effects. You can do tree covers, you can do um, meta balls, you can do uh, symmetrical lattices, boxes, uh, you can do toruses, spheres, 
um, cylinders, <coughs> pyramids, cones, all this other cool stuff. You can add different lights, and there's an option to go to desert. You can get models, but overall, um, in order when you're ready to basically output this, you want to set your priority to high. You want to optimize zation, uh, use you know aggressive optimization, and if quality at super, not super fine, but premium. This will render out, and this will take probably about 15, 15 minutes, I guess, uh, to render out this simple scene in order to use for like a client, or if you wanted to put up, like, you know, put up your different wallpaper collections or something, uh, then that's what you can do. And then go ahead and render this out, and we'll come back to it. And as you can see, it starts off very raw. And down here at the bottom left, it'll give you an idea for what your time frame is. It looks like it's going to be about 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes to render this scene out in full premium mode with anti-aliasing and we'll come back at the end and close this thing out. One of the things I noticed, I wanted to point this out, if I set this my priority to aggressive and high, you can see it's using all four of my cores, which is basically eight cores if you split it out, but it's a uh, i7 2600 um, Intel 2600K i7 processor. So it is using all processor speed. It's not doing anything with my GPU meter. Um, I mean it's just not doing anything. So it's using all basically available CPU power and as you can see here because it's 32-bit it's only using 4 gigs of memory. This was a 64-bit operating system and used uh, Direct3D. Then you would see this pretty much tapped out and my GPU meter would probably be going a little bit nuts. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out as I was rendering this, I noticed that. Alright, so basically it took about nine minutes to render this simple scene out. And of course, we didn't even touch and go into different options for sky and editing other materials. But basically, there you have it. It's a pretty simple crevasse, or now a lake. One of the things I wanted to point out is if you want to get these little islands, don't bring it down so far in the y-axis. Just bring it up just a little bit because as the as the mountain scales and goes into the peak areas, there has to be some down point, right? So these are all the, basically the down points from when we flip it, if that makes sense. So play around, enjoy. I hope this was helpful. And uh, once again, this is Joe Falcione with www.reliantfilms.net. Have a great day. See you. Bye.